Hello again. This is Greg again uh, with part three um, of the object orientation tutorials on C Sharp. Uh, today I'm going to go over interfaces and repositories. Uh, first, I want to go over repositories. Repositories are um, pointers, if you will, to uh, storage. Okay, so if you are connecting to a SQL database, let's say, your repository would be your connector to the database. And your interface would be your routines that interface to that repository to the database. And then your, um, your main application will call those interfaces and the interfaces will then call the repository, the repository will get the data and everything will come back to the client. If that doesn't make 100% sense, it will make much more sense once we get into the code here, but I just want to give a background of what we're looking at. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make two new classes, or actually one class, one interface. Uh, first let's make a class and we will call it the employee repository okay and and then I'm going to add a another item don't instead of class you do item make sure you're on visual C sharp and then click interface and usually interface starts with an I um, you'll see this a lot when you just start doing WCF serv web services which I will get into in other tutorials um, but so if since we're going to be going this interface is going to hook to the employee repository class we're going to call it the I employee repository okay and then across pretty much any programming language I stands for interface so now we have our interface here which is great so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a couple of um, routines. So let's call, let's do void um, list, actually instead of void, let's do list uh, employee uh, get data. And you'll notice that that actually is a routine we already have somewhere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, within the employee repository class, I'm going to have it inherit by using in, using the uh, the colon here that tells me tells my class that I'm going to inherit another type. See how it says type um, or class or base class, uh, which is still a class, but. Um, just to give you an example, you might see um, certain things. I'm not sure if uh, WPF allows. Yes. So right here with your main window, you are actually inheriting the window class, which comes with a whole bunch of different controls and tools. Okay, which are probably inter also have interface hooks and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so if we go back here, we can do I employee repository now what you're gonna see very interestingly is let's say we click off of here okay uh, and we try to build this this is one of the nice pieces about uh, um, an interface you see how it says that it does not implement interface member C sharp blah 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 dot get data what that is saying is that you're inheriting this class your, your repository class is inheriting this interface but it's not it does not have the routine that you need in there for it to inherit so this is a really nice way to if you're trying to design in your head and you don't have a whiteboard in front of you one way I use interfaces nicely is to build out all my routines and then within you know he, within uh, Visual Studio the, the class that you inherit will let you know hey stupid you didn't you know add this routine and then you know before you even get anywhere that it's not going to compile one nice little feature um, with interfaces in Visual Studio 2010 I'm not sure if 20, 2008 did it or not but you can um, click um, uh, uh, you know you click within the interface itself that you inherited and then hover over and click on this there's an implement implement interface and if you click on that it will make the stub routine for you there and it's just gonna it's you know throwing an exce a non-implemented exce exception but it gives you your skeleton routine here 
which is great. So what we're going to actually do here is I'm going to get rid of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my old employee class. And I'm going to take this little routine that's making our database. And I'm going to put it where it really belongs, which is in the repository. Now, keep in mind, okay, that normally your get repository, really what's really going to happen. So actually, you know what? I'm going to take that back. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually do it the way you would do it. I'm making this routine right here that's get data okay but what this is going what this get data class is going to be is that's going to be like that's let's say that that was your your actual SQL um, database okay and what we're going to do here is use this routine this get data to actually call this guy okay so we'll, let's change this to get employees or actually no you know what get let's call let's keep it a get data and what we're going to do here is we're going to rename this to uh, get in place. Okay. And let me just control C. And we'll go over here. And we'll paste that back in here. Okay. And the only thing we should have to do here is do a list. Uh, oops. List employee employees equals new list employee and actually this should really be employee list is better okay and then return uh, employee list like that okay so let's see what we got going on here okay my guess would be is I just need to rebuild this guy because it's still saying that my implementation uh, let's see, it does not contain definition for get data, no extension method, blah, blah, blah. Are you missing an assembly reference? Okay, oh, this guy. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually comment that out for right now. Okay, so what, we, what we've what we accomplished so far, just to recap, is we made our get employees um, interface uh, routine. We've made our employee repository, and um, this routine is what is linked to the interface and we have our get data routine here which is basically like we'll pretend that that's our store procedure into this the SQL server okay so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do get data and this is going to be employee list okay now it may seem a little redundant right now, but what you're allowing yourself to do here is start abstracting things out. And that's the biggest thing with object orientation is that you're able to abstract things to the nth level. And this really allows you to start abstracting things so that, you know, whenever you have try or catches around things and all that, which I'll go in other go over in other routine in other uh, tutorials, you'll find that it, you'll your debugging it becomes much simpler because you'll know that when you get to this routine, okay, I know that my get the get data is going to be called within here. So there's not much going on here, but I'll know that okay if it's failing within the you know if it's failing in the repository class it is most likely within the the actual get data routine. So the more you abstract out, the better off you are from a debugging standpoint. So now we have this whole deal going, okay? Now what you'll notice here is that the interface is not public, and the repository is also not public. This helps a lot in um, your when you abstract these out into class libraries, because you can make the interface public and not you know public facing and not make the class the repository class public so that you are forcing that person you know they, they won't be able to do the gut dot get data they'll have to do the employee repository uh, or the get employees and all they'll know is get employees now you might ask yourself well why is that so important well let's say that you have this um, application right and you had a static um, you a static database just like this, just a whole bunch of information. So let's say it was a drop down, you know, that you statically assigned. Now your boss says, "Well, you know what? I want you to put that in a table uh, name list pair uh, in a table, and I want you to call SQL." 
Well, this routine doesn't call SQL right now. Normally, if you don't abstract it out, you have to change the whole link structure of, you know, from one, from each routine, and um, you may have to rename it or do this or that, and then by the time you get to your main window, all of a sudden you have to change all this information. With this done, you know, now you have this get employees that your other engineers will use, and they don't need to care about get data. So you can change this to whatever you want. You can have it do 10 different things and jump through hoops and stand on its head. And as far as, you know, the people doing the main script is concerned, they're just doing get employees. That's all they care about. That's all they need to ever know. Um, you'll notice that web services um, really um, are going off of this technique. So, and then I'll go over that in other routine, other tutorials. I don't want to step too much on too many things at one time, um, more for time than anything else on the video. Um, so, with that said, so now we've had we have our repository. So now what we can do is we can make our um, I employee repository. Okay, uh, employee interface. Oops, interface equals new and then we can do employee repository oops employee repository like that okay and then what I'm able to do so what I'm doing is I'm instantiating an I repository and using employee rep um, employee repository now you might be asking why would you do this well here's the deal the other th cool thing about the uh, the using an interface is the interface we could make another routine here called um, you know uh, void um, test right like that and this can this routine right here can be off of using some other repository of some sort you can do that you can link different um, routines within the interface which is really cool because it allows you to only give your fellow engineers again one set of rules or one set of routines and they don't have to care what other repository it go comes from or goes to it doesn't make a difference to them so anyway with that said um, so if we go back here now we do employee uh, interface dot and now you'll see you have a get we don't have any uh, get uh, data we just have get employees okay and what we'll do here is we're gonna change let's just copy this right here and let's see get employees actually what we're gonna do here is we copy commented that out so what we can do instead of copying anything is do employee list equals okay so we're doing the exact same thing that we did up here only instead of using get data, we're using get employees, which is part of the interface. So now if we run this guy, we should get exactly the same thing. Look at that. Exactly the same stuff. Perfect. So that concludes interfaces. I hope this was informative. I hope everybody has a great day.